is not another game. You know, uh, rivalry games are just not. If you're a coach at Ole Miss, there's always pressure to win this game no matter what. There's animosity, there's nastiness, you know, it's, it's, it's a big rivalry, it's a big game. So growing up, this like was the biggest game around and uh, I watched it every single year and I know how big it is. Every time I walk past it, like, beat state, beat state. It's always been important, it always will be important. <laughs> WCBI Sports Egg Bowl Special is brought to you by OCH Regional Medical Center, Richard Schwartz and Associates, PA, and visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Welcome into our 2017 Egg Bowl Special. I'm Tom Ebel. Hard to believe we are already at this point in the season. Of course, one of the best times of the year, the Egg Bowl game bringing back old school tradition playing the game on Thanksgiving Day. So whether it's a Thursday or Saturday, whatever day you name it, both the Bulldogs and Rebels, and of course the fan bases will be ready to roll for a 6.30 on a Thursday night. It's not another game, you know? Uh, rivalry games are just not. And uh, so uh, it's an important game for everybody. And I, I, I don't even have to bring it up. I mean, they know. Uh, we treat everything gets a little differently. It, it's, it is one of the fun parts about the game being on Thursday is it makes it unique in its own way that way. It's always been a big game uh, for as long as I can remember. Uh, it, 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 you know, to the people of the state of Mississippi, this is, uh, this is bragging rights. It's a, it's a huge, huge game, and it is every year, no, ma no matter what the situation. If you're a coach at Ole Miss, there's always pressure to win this game, no matter what. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always one of the biggest games of the season, and, um, and you have to treat it that way. And me being from Mississippi, I, you know, I know that more than anybody. When you look up and down the rosters of both Ole Miss and Mississippi State, there are plenty of guys that grew up either in the same hometowns, played on the same high school teams, or even brothers or cousins. Many of the players have grown up watching the Egg Bowl even before they tightened their first chin strap. And now they'll be a part of the history. Coach Mellon talked about, you know, it's big for everybody in this um, facility, everybody in this program, you know, always around campus, you know. Everybody who put a uniform on and played, with Mississippi State, you know, it means a lot to us. Growing up, this like was the biggest game around, and uh, I watched it every single year, and I know how big it is, and I'm glad to be a part of it this year. They tell you to arrive in front of the back. You know, once I came here, I knew what I was getting into, but I'm, I'm ready. Whether you're a two-year-old or you're in middle school or you're in high school and you got the Egg Bowl rivalry, everybody looks forward to that during the Thanksgiving week. Uh, my cousin played for them, Jesse Jackson, so me and him go at it. You know, it's a joke, but uh, things like that, man, it's a big game. Yeah, when I first got here, everyone was just, uh, just um, every time I walked past it, like, beat state, beat state. And uh, I knew that was a huge thing for our fans and our coaches and uh, just everybody here in Mississippi. So I'm super excited to play them this week. You know, one Ole Miss, ready will be re Ole Miss Rebel will be ready to rock on Thursday. Starkville's own A.J. Brown returns home wearing the blue and red and will look to close out his monster sophomore season with a win in his own backyard. Head coach Matt Luke and his quarterback Jordan Tamu say number one will be very busy when he hits the field. A.J. is not only one of our leaders and top players, one of the top players in the country. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be, uh, he will be in a focal point uh, for us to get him the ball, and this will, I'm sure this will be a big game for him. It's a big game for all of us, anybody from Mississippi, but especially for him 
you know, going back home, I'm sure it'll be a big game and emotional. Me and him had a one-on-one -on -one, uh, talk and all that, and he's, uh, he's been encouraging me and just uh, stepping up like a leader and just telling me, uh, we got to get this one this week. Uh, I'm from Starksville and all that, and it's going to mean something big to him. And uh, I told him I got his back. I'm, I'm going to play my 100%. This is our last game. I'm going to play for the seniors. I'm going to play for the coaches. I'm going to play for my teammates. Coming up next on our Egg Bowl special, Robbie Donahoe sits down one on one with former Bulldog great Reggie Kelly. We have more on that coming up right after the break. Welcome back into our 2017 Egg Bowl special here on WCBI. I am Robbie Donahoe, and it became a tradition two years ago. We didn't get a chance to have him here last year. We had Tyson Lee sort of becoming that 1B to the 1A that is, of course, the man, the myth, the legend. Reggie Kelly, former Mississippi State Bulldog from 95 to 98. It's good to have you back, by the way. Well, I prefer not to be called Reggie on this show. Uh-huh. Perhaps salt and a little and bit pepper. of pepper right yes. there. Yes. I like and it. And we're coming at you guys, okay. <laughs> giving you one-on-one -on -one analysis of this year's Egg Bowl game against the are, dreaded. Are you allowed to say them? I know Dan Mullen says the school up north, but can you say the words old and miss together? Well, I'll describe them with a couple of adjectives. Dreaded. Uh -huh. Okay. Make your eyes roll in the back of your head. Old Miss Rebels. Okay, at least, at least I got it out of you. Well, I mean, it pained me. I know it pained you guys as well, but I had to at least do it for the sake of this yeah. recording. You're, you're a true professional, <laughs> as always. All right, let's get down to business. This game for Mississippi State. You, you've seen just this team overall this mm -hmm. year. What have you seen, especially over the past few games, where they've, ever since that Auburn loss, it, it sort of looked like they were starting to put it together. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm an offensive guy playing 13 years in the NFL right. as a tight end, so I love offense. But I tell you, man, I've been very impressed with the defense this year. The guys mm -hmm. have been flying around, been very aggressive. I like the play calling as well, been very aggressive as well. Like big number 94, he's a force within that middle, and he's very slippery uh -huh. but has great power. And he's an anchor of that defense. You're going to see him right here. That's Jeffrey Simmons. Oh, Man, yes. has he been, he's been he quite He is a amazing. monster. He is a beast. And he plays with some anger, with some attitude. And that's what you want out of your defensive front. Now, you're going to get a lot out of this guy who's running the ball right now, Nick Fitzgerald, wearing number seven. Mm -hmm. It seems like every game he comes up with a big play or a yes. big moment to surge this and will this team to win. Just how crucial it is, for, is it for him to have a big game? Kind of well, I, I think that obviously he's the catalyst that's going to make this team go, not just the offense, but the team. The team is going to feed off of him, and he's a dual threat. You know, just like Dak was a dual threat, he yep. does it with his legs. Um, he does it with his arm. I know coming into the season, we all talked about, I think the coaching staff talked about him improving with his accuracy, but mm -hmm. every player's got something to, to polish of off, course, right? Sure. I love the way that this kid plays. I love the way that he's matured from year one to year two. Expect a great game out of him this last game. All right, let's, let's go into the way back machine, 95 oh, to 98 boy. with your egg bolts. Ah. You went two and two. You obviously had good ah. moments, whether it was home or away. Yes. Just overall, just playing in this game. What does it mean? Well, I mean, you know, obviously, whenever you're playing against your in-state rival, you want to win that game without a shadow of a doubt because you want to have bragging rights right. for the entire year. And for us to have the season that we have, eight and three right now, right? Yep. They're mm -hmm. five and six. Five and six. You know, they don't have an, an option to play in a bowl game. So I'm mm -hmm. sure that they would rather come in and beat us to lower our bowl status. Sure. And nine and three looks a lot better than 84, eight and four. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> it does. It certainly does. <laughs> so they're does. going to be shooting to do that as well. And we have to make sure that we come out playing this game like we played against Alabama, not like we played against Arkansas. Arkansas, I think we had a few miscues at yep. the beginning of the game. That was a game I thought that we should have easily, easily won. And we need to make sure that we come out on this game playing extremely hard, especially at the beginning of the game. Take their life away. Don't give them any hope mm -hmm. and run this game and win this game. As a player, do you get caught up too much into the emotions of a big game such as this, or do you just sort of just go out there and just let it all out, don't even worry about anyone telling you anything? Well, it depends on the player, but emotions are automatically going to flow in this game. You got your family members from Mississippi, your friends from Mississippi right. watching this game. Then you're playing against old high school teammates that you definitely want to destroy as well. So, yes, emotions are a big part of this game, but you can't let the emotion cause you to make some early miscues in the game. Sure have to make sure that you stay poised and play within the system, be very detailed, and get a win. This is a game, you know, regardless of the records, you just never know how the game is going to fare. But I'm hoping my dogs can really come out on fire 
and really make a statement at the beginning of the game. All right. Well, speaking of your dogs, we got to get a prediction now. <sighs> How are you feeling about the game? You're hoping you're going to be there coming up Thursday nights. Yes. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I tell you what. Now, now, Salt. I know uh -huh. that I know that you can't be partial to my Mississippi State board. I, I, I know I'm sorry. you can't. So, <laughs> so, but for the sake of our relationship, right. you have to make sure that when we stop recording, that you. Well, well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but I'm going for my, my Bulldogs to finish this regular season, 9-3. and three. Uh -huh. I'm going to give us a 27-13 to 13 edge. Okay, so you're expecting a little Rebels. more low-scoring game. Then. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, when you're playing this type of a game, a rival game, you know, kids are really going to be up to play. You can throw the records out the window. That matters not. A lot of players are going to be playing for pride. They're going to be playing for their families, for their friends. They don't want to look back, and they definitely want to hold that trophy. And a keep it at egg. their place for an entire year. We will see how it all plays out. By the way, this guy came so prepared. Put, show him the socks. Sock game. Oh, Robert, socks. Let's, let's show him the socks. Okay, sock I got to show him my socks too. Ah, sock game is on so fire right you've now. You've got the maroon and gray Hero socks. Radar. I've got more of the colorful socks, as you can see. Did you guys you're, see that? You're way Hold ahead of the sec. game. Should I do this now? My feet don't stink. Oh. Guys. Check that out. Check that out. Yes, it's real. Got to wave it's off real. the stench there. <laughs> Reggie Kelly, always the man. Doing it big, as always, in the 2017 Egg Bowl Special. We will have more on the big-time rivalry matchup between the Bulldogs and the Rebels when we come back. Thanks. Welcome back into our WCBI Egg Bowl Special. We're here inside of Vaught-Hemingway Stadium. I'm joined by Ole Miss two-time All-American NFL veteran of the offensive line, now Pearl River Community College right, offensive right. line coach Terrence Metcalf. Terrence, right. thanks for uh, taking the time for us. Man, thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about your Egg Bowl experiences. You were here from 1998 to 2001. What, do you have any kind of special Egg Bowl memory that sits off the top of your head, of maybe like a time where that stands out to you during an Egg Bowl? Most definitely, man. You know, this is a rivalry game that goes back way before my time. But, you know, you, you come from Clarksdale. I come from Clarksdale, and I have teammates that's playing at Mississippi State. and. My senior year, I got an opportunity to go against uh, Mario Hagan. Uh, both of us, I mean, we started at Higgins Junior High together. Uh, ended up, I came to Ole Miss. He went to Mississippi State. Both of us all Americans, and we get an opportunity to face each other. You know, a little brotherly love, a little brotherly uh, rivalry, man. And we always talk about that. So that was a special, uh, special time for me. So being a Mississippi man yourself, just how important is this game when? It came time to Egg Bowl week. Was maybe the energy ramped up around campus, around the practice facility? Well, you know, it's, it's really a community game. The communities uh, are divided. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, families are divided. Some people may marry into an um, Ole Miss family. Some may marry into a Mississippi State family. So, you know, the community always remind you that, all right, we got to get it this week. Sometimes, you know, like this year, it's, it's, it's Ole Miss. Who, who kind of, you know, having highs and lows on, on on the football field. Mississippi State is doing really well, you know, and kudos to them, you know. Uh, but this game doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean anything about the, the schedule or who has the most wins or who has the most losses. When you touch the field, man, it, it's it's automatic. Uh, <laughs> you put your war face on. You know, it has nothing to do. This, this is all season. You know, this game here is one of the most important games uh, on that schedule. And, and people can try to downplay it all you want um, from the head coaches to the assistant in the training room or assistant manager. This game is important. You know, it's like the Super Bowl for you all. It, it really is. You know, uh, you, you want to win playing in the Super Bowl. So it's kind of like <laughs> similar to that. You maybe. know, one, one of the crazy thing about it, you, there, the coach doesn't have to tell you to get ready for this game. In the Super Bowl, the coach doesn't have to get you ready for practice. You know, don't have to make sure you're on, on time for meetings or you've studied your playbook. It's the same thing with this game. You're supposed to know what you're supposed to know for this game and to do your job and do it well. Uh, and that's expected of you, not just by the coaches or your community, but by your teammate, your brothers that's beside you. They expect for you to do the right thing uh, in between the whistles and to know exactly what you're supposed to do. So we'll change gears here, going to talk about someone on the Ole Miss football team right mm -hmm. now, your son, D.K. Metcalf. Uh -huh. You know, as an Ole Miss man yourself who wore the Rebel colors, what's it like being able to watch D.K. 
play in an Ole Miss uniform and not just play, but have, be very successful at this point of his career? You know what? It's truly a blessing. You know, any any father would love to see their son uh, playing at the same college that he ended up playing at, and and not only playing but being a contributor on the team. You know, you 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 harp on them while they're growing up that these opportunities may come. Uh, got to stay humble, got to stay prayed up, got to stay before the Lord, and he'll bless you, man. And this, this is just something that I just see the blessings of God just coming uh, to fruition, man. I just, I'm not surprised at all that he is who he is on the football field. Uh, he is who he is off the field. He's a humble young man. Um, I'm really proud of him, you know, and I can't say enough about him, you know. A lot of people see the the, the catches on the field and him running and the blocks, but I know the heart of the individual, you know, and uh, like I tell him, regardless of the, the game day, it is who you is every day, you know, and I know you carry the Lord with you, and I know that's an element that that can't go unnoticed, you know, and uh, I mean, I'm real proud of him, man. I, you know, I told Coach Freeze and Coach Luke, um, Coach Hurd, who's no longer with us, but I told those guys when they offered him, you know, that that meant a lot to our family, you know, because they didn't have to do it. He's a ninth grader. They offered him. He stayed strong all the way through, even after being offered by every school in the SEC. Yeah. He stayed true to Mississippi. And, uh, you know, there's no better character to me than that. What do you think are the keys for Ole Miss to maybe escape Starkville with an upset and the Egg Bowl trophy, bring it back here to Oxford? Well, to me, it is they got to go out and they got to do what they do. They got to play offensively and defensively. They got to stop them, man. Just you know, the coaches are the ones that are teaching the guys the X's and O's, uh, and they're going to have a game plan. They got to execute their game plan uh, and do what it is that Coach Luke and Coach McGriff, uh, <laughs> Coach Lungo, all those guys that that they're teaching them every day. You know how to be successful. And um, to me, if they go out and they play their game. And the ball bounced their way a couple of times, man. Who knows what's gonna happen? This is the SEC. And I tell people right. I tell people all the time, you never know what's gonna happen in the SEC. You know, one team can be down and the other team can be riding a high horse and all of a sudden the football guys do a different thing on, on any given Saturday. So, you know, anything can happen. Especially in this game, the Egg Bowl. You know, exactly. This you know? is it, man. This is, this is the icing on the cake for Again. a season, possibly. <laughs> Again, I've, I've been in the many of them. And uh, when people thought Ole Miss should win, State ended up winning the game. When yeah. people thought State should win, we ended up winning the game. So, it, 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 you know, it's, it's the Egg Bowl, baby. That's, it's, it's, that's how I like to, 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 to uh, describe it. Who knows what's going to happen? Absolutely. And so, if you had to, what do you think in prediction wise? I don't, predict, I don't predict scores, but I'm an Ole Miss guy. I'm always riding with the Rebels. Got you, man. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, that's it, Terrence. Thank you so much for taking the time. Of course, it's an honor to have you and Ole Miss football legends introduced this year. Of oh, course, it's, it's fantastic to have you out here. And we know you'll be watching on Sunday. Or Sunday, Thursday. <laughs> Hopefully Sunday. Hopefully Sunday. <laughs> but Thursday as well for the Egg Bowl. It's going to be a fantastic game. You heard it here from Terrence. Anything can happen. The football gods can go anyone's way. That does it for here in Vaught Hemingway Stadium. I'm Tom Ebel. Our Egg Bowl special continues right after the break. Welcome back into our end zone special. So to prepare for the big game, it's time for a WCBI top plays. Egg Bowl edition. We'll go to that game in Starkville, Mississippi State, taking on Kentucky. The big fella, Jerry Green on the interception. Great blocking. The big fella showing off the wheels, saying, hey, I play defense, but I can run. Well, that might be a 4-6 speed there for the touchdown. Get to get that one. And then, of course, maybe the catch of the year, DK Metcalf. The helmet grab against Vanderbilt. That is an, a sensational catch. DK will look to do a couple of moves on Stark, in Starkville on Thursday. And then, of course, we can't forget the Simmons SWAT. Jeffrey Simmons against LA Tech. Louisiana Tech, that is. This would be one of two Jeffrey Simmons touchdowns in that game. But Jeffrey showing out from then on. And then more magic from Ole Miss, Shea Patterson. Boy, the Rebels might be missing this. The little bit Shea magician on Thursday. He's going to find his main man, number one, off the screen, but finds A.J. Brown, who's going to take it about 80 yards to the house. A.J. having a fantastic year for the Ole Miss Rebels. And then possibly one of my favorite plays 
from the 2017 season. Nick Fitzgerald back to that Louisiana Tech game. This is a little bit of Heisman here. He's going to stiff arm my man right there. Yikes, that's a quarterback. Grown man run. We'll hope to see plenty of that coming up on Thursday for the big game.